23 years ago today, if you will cast your minds back, on this same occasion, I gave the opening prayer in which I said, quote, we have met here today clothed in the black robes of a false priesthood. Now, many have asked me since then whether I really said such a shocking thing, but nobody has ever asked what I meant by it. Why not? Well, some knew the answer already, and as for the rest, we do not question things at the BYU. But, <laughs> well, <laughs> I didn't expect that. Uh, there have been some things said about Brigham Young University by others. None of them are as painfully critical as what Nibley occasionally says. And the same goes for certain aspects of the church, institutionally speaking. He really is its gadfly critic. And Hugh, of course, is, is above the fray, not in the sense of his being esoteric uh, or, uh, or highly advanced, but likewise, I think, because his commitment is so visible and has been so pronounced and so repetitively stated that that's not even the issue. So then we get on to what is Hugh saying? Does he still talk so fast that no one can understand what he's saying? No one knows what he knows. And that, of course, also is a problem with knowing him. Sometimes I think I don't know him at all. I'm just grateful that Hugh Nibley, with his brilliance, wasn't buried somewhere in the Middle Ages in some monastic assignment that he would have performed with his brilliance. I'm grateful instead that he's been preserved to be here in the dispensation of the fullness of times when there could be a full flowering of his genius and his ability put at the disposal of the kingdom. And Hugh Nibley, in his field, would be the most remarkable scholar we have. He is so focused on the things that matter and is spiritually submissive that he's impatient with mediocrity, he's impatient with irrelevance, and to the casual eye, that may be seen as eccentricity, when in fact, I think it's a reflection of his deepened discipleship. No, you just have to take Hugh for what he is and let him drift. Is he a cynic and a pessimist with all kinds of negative things to say? Yes. Is he an optimist, an idealist with great hope for the future? Yes. Some would say you can't get those together. He does. <laughs> There's a story he's told in the Midrash. It begins with Abraham sitting in the door of his tent in the plain of Mamre in the heat of the day. But this was a hot day, you see. This is what inspired the story, probably. It was a hot day. It says it was the day like the breath of Gehenna, like the breath of hell was coming out. And we, you can see the kind of country it was and is when this, this is so, the heat and the dust and the sand, the us utter desolation. And he was worried, of course, because he, he says some poor stranger might be lost out there. Someone might have lost his way and uh, be perishing because you're not going to last higher than this. So he sent his faithful servant, Eliezer, out to look everywhere. He sent him out in all directions. He came back. No, I can't find anyone anywhere. He was still worried. He says, there might be someone out there. And you, you have these feelings. So he, he went out himself, though he was very sick at the time. He was sick and ailing and old. And he went out and into that hell. And he looked and searched, but he found no one. And at the end of the day, he came back exhausted toward his tent. As he approached the tent, the three strangers were standing there. It was the Lord and the two with him, because the Lord goes with his counselor, so to speak. He throws himself down on his face. And then it is that he promises him Isaac <laughs> as a reward for what he had done. The Suprema. It's a very moving story. He'd gone out to look for his fellow man, and out in that dusty hell, you see, all, all along, Eliezer couldn't find him. He said, I think I can find something. Well, he found something. He found the answer to the thing he'd prayed for all his life, his son Isaac. Yeah. It's a beautiful story. But if the desire of Abraham was that through him, his people and all mankind should be blessed, this Abraham, who towers like a colossus, is every man, as every man should be. In this world, remember what the Lord promised the apostles, in this world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. 